In that direction, the cat said, waving its right paw round, lives a hatter. And in that direction, waving the other paw, lives a march hare. Visit either you like. They're both mad. But I don't want to go among mad people, Alice remarked. Oh, you can't help that, said the cat. We're all mad here. I'm mad, you're mad. How do you know I'm mad, said Alice. You must be, said the cat, or you wouldn't have come here. What a weird and wonderful book. Hey everyone, I'm Alex. Thanks for clicking. And welcome to this lesson on learning English with Alice in Wonderland. So this is a very popular fantasy book written by Lewis Carroll. It has been popularized uh, in that very, very famous Disney movie as well. You've probably heard of it. Um, and even today, it's still a wonderful book with a lot of wordplay and playful language. Um, it's just very, very funny and fun and interesting, and it's very quick, and a lot happens in it. Um, so if you enjoy um, diving into fantasy worlds, it's an excellent book. So I'm going to put this down over here. And what I have there is the physical book. Um, however, if you would like to get a free copy of the book from audible.com, you can do that by clicking the link that is attached to the description of this video. Um, you don't have to get Alice in Wonderland. You can get any you know, audio book that you like. Audible has a very wide selection. But if you do get the Alice in Wonderland audio book, again, click the link go through the process, your first audiobook is free, I recommend getting the version that is narrated by Shelby Lewis. So there are many versions of Alice in Wonderland in audio format on Audible. Um, and I found that the Shelby Lewis narration is the clearest and it's at a good pace and it should be you know, the most understandable version of the book for English students. Uh, I really only recommend it though if you are an intermediate or upper intermediate student. If you are a beginner, um, this is probably not the book for you, okay? So again, check it out on audible.com and check out the link that is attached to this video to get one free audio book. Now, on to the lesson. So today, I'm gonna look at some phrases and sentences five of them specifically, that have come and been popularized by Alice in Wonderland. Um, some of the discussion today will center around mental health um, and why some of the language in Alice in Wonderland, including what I just read, needs to be read with a certain type of um, sensitivity as well as an understanding of the context from which it came. So just to start, Let's start a little light over here. I'll get off the board so you guys can see everything. Push print screen. Is that better? All right. First we have curiouser and curiouser. Now you see the word curious and curious and you say, wait, can you say curiouser? Not really. But like I said, uh, normally you're supposed to say like more and more curious. Uh, but Alice in Wonderland is playful. It doesn't care. <laughs> sometimes um, about word rules or grammar rules. So for that reason, if you're a beginner, it's not a good book for you. Upper intermediate, advanced, you wanna see some interesting wordplay, it's a really cool book. So curiouser and curiouser, this is a phrase which means stranger and stranger, or hmm, more and more interesting. So let me give you an example sentence so you can see what I mean and in what types of contexts you can use it. So imagine you are watching a TV series and you finished an episode and you're really curious about what's going to happen next. So you might say, hmm, curiouser and curiouser, I wonder what's going to happen next, right? So you're like, oh, that was really interesting. Uh, while we're talking about the word stranger, maybe you watched you know, the series Stranger Things on Netflix and a lot of stuff in that show and various parts of, uh, you know, the story, you know, you could say, ooh, curiouser and curiouser, like what's going to happen with Will now and what's happening here? Um, this isn't only to talk about movies or series, of course. 
This can be about any situation where things are getting more and more interesting or more and more, well, stranger, are getting stranger. So if you are going for a walk with friends and you're like, okay, this is kind of a, an interesting path. There are some flowers I've never seen before. Curiouser and curiouser, okay? So uh, let's try that one more time. Curiouser. Let's do it slow. I know it's a hard word. Curiouser. Curiouser and curiouser. Okay. Next. Um, so I put an asterisk next to this. Uh, so the phrase is mad as a hatter. So the Mad Hatter is a character in Alice in Wonderland who is a little atypical. Um, so they function in a different way than the majority of people in that world function. Now, the word mad, uh, this is similar and to a word uh, like crazy, which is not popularly used or is not uh, looked upon favorably in today's world because words like mad, words like insane, words like crazy, um, they can be said to stigmatize people who have um, mental health issues or mental, mental differences than others. So you can still use it. Instead of using a word like mad or instead of using a word like crazy, you can internalize it and use words like um, irrational or strange or atypical or erratic, okay? So um, again, crazy, insane, they have very negative connotations in today's world. So uh, you can still use mad as a hatter and people can understand depending on the context you use it in, whether you mean like, it's like strange or atypical, that means not typical, okay? Or erratic, all right? So did you see his latest interview? He was mad as a hatter. So if you, uh, you know, if you see someone who's having an interview on television, a famous personality, and in the interview, they're answering questions in a strange way, or they're behaving in, a, in an odd way, um, like they're running around or jumping, like he was everywhere. He was mad as a hatter. Um, even in sports, like if someone is playing in a way that's in a very impressive way, you could say it's like, wow, he played like he was mad as a hatter. He was all over the field, very fast, very erratic, not typical of a soccer player or a hockey player or something like that, okay? So just be careful what context you use uh, this in, okay? Next, uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Um, so these are two characters in the book who are fools or clowns, essentially. They're very playful. Um, if you use the, the phrase, you know, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, these are two names, um, this refers to two foolish people. So this can often be used in a comedic way uh, if you are talking about politics and two political candidates. So for example, um, I watched the debate between Tweedledee and Tweedledum yesterday. So if you are someone who is cynical about politics, and you have two candidates who you feel are, you know, a little foolish, um, who are, it's like, he's a clown, she's a clown, whatever it is. Um, you can say, it's like, yep, there's Tweedledee and Tweedledum, two fools, two clowns, two people who should not be in politics because they don't have the uh, necessary skills to do it, okay? Uh, the last two. So these are just common sentences that came from Alice in Wonderland or that were popularized. So here, at the beginning of the book, the beginning of the movie, you have the rabbit who says, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. So if you're ever late for something like a dentist appointment, uh, if you're late for a meeting, anything like that, or a date with your friends or your wife or girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, anyone, um, and you're talking to a friend who knows Alice in Wonderland, probably, uh, you can say, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Um, maybe you're a nerd if you say this, like I am. So, you know, I've said this before. <laughs> um, it depends. I really like the book. So that's it. Finally, we're all mad here. So again, mad, 
uh, it can have a negative connotation depending on how you're using it, what your understanding of the word is. But if your understanding of the word is atypical, um, irrational, or strange, different, uh, interesting, um, for example, welcome to the team. We're all mad here. So welcome to the team. Someone just introduced you to your new workplace. And if they want to make, you know, have a little fun, you can say, we're all mad here. We're all a little off the wall. We're all a little different. We're all a little strange. That guy wears a funny hat every day. Um, you know, she likes putting toys on her desk all the time. So a uh, very colorful arrangement of people work here. You can use it in that light, in that way. All right. So hopefully I've given you some language that you'll be able to identify um, if you hear it in any context, whether you're watching a YouTube video or a movie or a television series, or maybe even if you read Alice in Wonderland, you'll know where these phrases, where these sentences came from. So once again, curiouser and curiouser, mad as a hatter, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date and we're all mad here, okay? Uh, so if you wanna check out the audiobook, again, Shelby Lewis. Look for the version that is narrated by Shelby Lewis. Let me know what you think. Pick up that free audiobook. And if you wanna test your understanding of this material, as always, you can check out the quiz on ingvid.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Like, the, like it, share it, uh, comment on it. And until next time, thanks for clicking.